six days ago, I made a video on MemGPT, which is a groundbreaking model that teaches large language models to manage their own memory for unbonded context. In a way, it's a walkway to have large language models as operating systems with memory. Now, what if I was to actually tell you that there is something better than that framework? This is where I introduce SPR, also known as Sparse Priming Representations, a public repo created by the famous YouTuber David Shapiro. He created this intricate research project which is focusing on developing and sharing techniques for efficiently representing complex ideas, memories, concepts using minimal set of keywords, phrases, or statements. Now, after personal tests, it's much better than MemGPT and it is much more powerful. It is something that you can use right away as well as becoming part of editing it in a way that could be best fit to whatever you want it to actually generate. Basically, how this actually works is that LMs work in a similar way as humans do because of our associative human behavior. It's when subjects basically create a relationship between stimuli which is whether it is actually an image memory or a physical or behavioral memory. Now, to give an example to this, if I was to mention a phrase, Houston, we have a problem. Your brain creates multiple ranges of ideas that have a relationship between the stimuli of this memory because the words I actually mentioned have some sort of association with an image memory you may have in your actual brain. This is called a mental model, and it's also something large language models are composed of. Both humans and LMs have a need of a small reminder in order to remember things we actually already know. It's a way of recalling a memory. And when we take a look at MemGPT, we saw that it recalls memory through a continuous loop of its tier memory system to process it in a way. Now, if you look at SPR, for example, it's way more efficient in recalling memory. And it's something that we're going to showcase throughout today's video. Now, SPR basically enables large language models or subjects that are related to what the memory is associated to quickly recall it and reconstruct the original idea with minimal context. SPR basically aims to mimic the natural human process of recalling and recombining sparse memory representations, thus facilitating like the efficient knowledge storage as well as the retrieval. Now this is a research paper that is highly intricate and very very useful. It's something that we can access today and throughout today's video we're actually going to be exploring SPR further in detail by showcasing how you can actually use it, go over the theory of it, and going just basically more in depth on what SPR is truly capable of doing. So with that thought guys, definitely stay tuned throughout the end of this video, but let's get straight into it. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. As you mentioned at the start, we're going to take a look at another memory organization technique that LLMs can basically implement. It's a way easier way to offer this memory adjustment approach compared to MemGPT's actual approach, which has this continuous loop as well as its tier memory system to recall different sorts of memories to basically operate. Now, in summary, SBR is a technique that helps you store and remember information, more like how our brains naturally do it. This is a framework that is publicly available and it's actually way more easier to implement than MemGPT, which is why I wanted to actually put some emphasis on this because it's something that many of us can actually implement into our AI tools, which can basically elevate it to the next level. Now, to basically take a step back and focus on the theory and reasoning, I wanted to talk a little bit more about human memory in relation to SPR. We know that human memory is good at keeping things simple and easy to remember, but it's kind of hard at connecting ideas, which is why you might want it to actually recall memories through reminders. In the same way, large language models require these reminders. Now, SPR basically takes this idea and it uses to make information easy to understand and remember. It makes it simple, like how 
we actually do with our brains and how we actually recall memory. It does this by using short, clear sentences and it captures the main points of an idea in a summary. This way, you're basically able to like quickly grasp the idea as well as remember the information, just like how our brains actually work. And that's like the approach that SPR actually does. It's useful in different fields like AI, machine learning, managing information, as well as for education. It helps large language models handle a lot more information better and efficiently. It's also able to help a wide array of different ranges of users. So this is a quite amazing framework as to how David was able to implement this into different large language models. If you guys would like to access our private Discord, which gives you free subscriptions to daily as well as monthly AI tools, as well as consultation, networking opportunities, daily AI news, as well as much more different features that are associated on this Patreon page, definitely take a look at this with the link in the description below. If you guys haven't followed World of AI on Twitter, I highly recommend that you do so so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. Lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos on this YouTube page so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI content, as well as take a look at some of these videos so that you can benefit by implementing these tools into your day-to-day -day lives. So later on in the video, we're actually going to take a look at how you can basically implement this custom integration with this custom instruction inside ChatGPT so that you can get this memory SPR output. This will basically help ChatGPT become smarter in a way as you're going to be teaching it through the instructions that you provide it. So let's actually take a look at Shapiro's write-up on sparse primic representation. We know that SPR is this method to, that is actually used to teach large language models like GPT in more efficient ways. And we also know that there's few ways to teach other models, but it has a lot of other limitations. We're able to see that the initial bulk training is a limitation, which is very, very expensive. We have the fine tuning aspect that it's not always great for retrieval knowledge. You have the online learning, which isn't always certain as there could be practical or profitable ways that it will be pan out in the future in commercial viable ways. Uh, you have the in-context learning, which basically means that there is more effective methods. Now, right now we know that we have this RAG tool, which is quite popular, but people do not know it's the retrieval augmented generation. Now, it basically uses tools like vector databases, knowledge graphs, but they are able to quickly run into issues with the size of the context window. Now, one common question that uh, Shapiro was able to ask is that you're able, like, how is it to overcome these context windows with these limitations? And basically, he came up with a solution that the answer is not to waste time. Now, there is an exception to this, and he further goes on by stating that there's more techniques that don't make full uses of large language model special abilities, and that is the latent space. LMs are basically similar to how a human mind is, and this is through the associative learning, and it's something that we talked about at the start of this video. In just a few words, you can use Prime to have large language models think in a certain way. For example, you can teach them to like understand a complex novel idea that hasn't been actually trained upon. Now these primers or SPRs are probably one of the most efficient ways. And it's something that I had no idea of before I watched his video on it, which I highly recommend that you take a look at because he explains it way better than I do as he's the creator of this and he conveys this complex concept in such a great way. So now, basically with SVRs, you compress whatever information is set through these SVRs and you feed it to the large language model during the inference, not in the raw human readable data, but during the inference. And this makes the learning process more efficient and effective, and it gives you the best output like MemGPT actually does. So basically you can implement these two instructions, the generator, as well as the decomposer, you can use this to compress any arbitrary block of text into the SPR, and you're also able to decompose it by using this to reconstruct an SPR into the an original. Now, in this case, I'm gonna copy this, 
then I'm going to go to the playground. You can implement this in any instruction tuning section of a model. You can do this in Vibe UI as well, which is very, very useful. You copy and paste this, the mission, the theory, as well as the methodology into the playground of the system message. Now, once you have done that, you're able to move forward. So now that I give it a user input, I'm going to submit this with the system message that I gave it and it will now output the SVR, which will summarize it in jot, like in basic jot format. Once you have this outputted, what you can now do is go back onto the repo and sorry, not the repo, but the actual uh, decomposer. You want to copy this and what you can now do is go back into the playground. You're able to edit this system message again, paste it back over here, copy this context that the assistant has basically outputted. What you can now do is go back into the user, paste it over here, and it will now decompose this back to how it originally was. And the basic meaning of this is that it decomposed and compressed the generation of what we gave it. It's basically a form of somatic compression as David also stated in his video. It's like how we tend to summarize certain blocks of memories in our brains and we convey it out once we have recalled that memory. Now we know that because LMs are associative like humans are, you can simply provide it enough details and it will then reconstruct the original statement like we see over here. And it's very, very useful and in a way, it's way more efficient as it uses less tokens compared to MemGPT. And it's also able to do this way more simpler. Now you can go further and ask it questions as it will then recall the memory from it, the original input, and it will then observe it in a way so that it can input the best possible outcome of this generation. Now you're also able to add multiple SVRs to improve its functionality. And this is another thing that you can do but this is just a small little overview as to how you can basically recall memory with large language models. This is a quite efficient way as well. So a huge shout out to Dave Shapiro. I keep calling him David. I don't know if it's David, sorry. But I will leave the link in the description below to his video. Huge props to him for actually constructing something like this. I highly recommend that you guys subscribe to him. Definitely check out his video and definitely give this repo of his uh, liking by uploading it. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some sort of value throughout it. It really means a lot to me, guys. If you guys can go check out the Patreon page, uh, definitely give World of AI on Twitter a follow if you guys haven't already. And make sure you guys subscribe, turn notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day. I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.